trippy, weird, infinite tunnels in After Effects. Let's get into it. So technically the tunnels that we're making are not infinite. This video is clickbait and it does not feel good, does it? Really what we're gonna be doing is making a shape, repeating it, scaling it, moving it, and looping it. I will be using Adobe After Effects CC 2020. So if you do not have the same repeater options as me, make sure you update your Creative Cloud. All right, let's begin. All right, so let's start by making a new polygon. And we wanna use a polygon because then we have the ability to make it into any other shape that we want, even a circle. So let's just go ahead and make a polygon. I'm gonna alt drag this out from the center. And then let's just go ahead and center this up. Let's uh, control tilde to open up all these uh, properties and just go ahead and zero everything out. Zero out the rotation, scroll down to the position. Let's just zero this stuff out here. You want this uh, transform position to be at 960 by 540 if you're at a 1920 by 1080 canvas to just put it in the dead center, okay? We're at the dead center now so we can uh, do a nice centered spiral. Good stuff. Okay, so now that I have my shape here, I am going to add a repeater. Now, I wanna add my repeater to the contents here, not the poly star. I mean, I could do either, but stick with me. We're gonna click on add here, and we're gonna click repeater. Make sure you're doing it on the contents. With my repeater, I can just, uh, drag out the, the amount of copies to, let's just do like 100 for right now. And then we can move the offset in either direction. Twirl down the transform here, and we wanna push the scale back like this. See that, we're pushing the scale back, making this fake kind of space happen. Now if I move this position over right into the center, which is gonna just be zero, is dead center, now we got this tunnel action happening here. All right, so we can just kind of play with the scale here. The lower the scale, the farther back in space, the more space in between each shape is happening like this. So just kind of make some space that you like and like this. Now, if we change the offset, we can bring these shapes forwards and backwards in this fake kind of space. I'm gonna hold control to drag this um, in smaller increments because if we don't hold control it's going to kind of go crazy so let's just kind of bring this up a little bit so we have these kind of breaking the plane the foreground plane like this maybe like right here and now we're going to add a little bit of animation to this so i'm going to put a keyframe on the offset right here and then maybe go ahead five seconds for some easy math and let's put another keyframe holding control and just drag this forward a little bit, like to here. So now let's see if we like this speed. Something like that, I think that's totally fine. Maybe it could be a little bit faster. I'll make it a little bit faster, drag it a little more forward. And now we want this looping. So I'm gonna take a picture of this by clicking the snapshot button, take a snapshot. Boom, took a snapshot. And I'm gonna go over here and now using the eyeball, we can compare our beginning of the loop and try to match it up at the end of the loop. So if I click and hold on here, I can see, okay, well, this part up here is a little bit uh, more behind. So I'm gonna just kind of drag this back a little bit until it kind of lines up with that. Maybe I'll hold control and, and tab this back a little bit. Okay, now these are perfectly matched up and we should have a, a good moving loop at five seconds. Perfect. So now what I wanna do is I wanna make this into a loop. In case I want this to be longer than five seconds, I want this to loop on forever. So I'm gonna alt click on this offset and type loop out with parentheses. Here it auto filled for me. If it doesn't auto fill for you, just make sure you're typing this exact expression like this. Now if I extend my work area, this is just gonna loop forever like that. Beautiful. So now if you wanna change the speed of this at all, all you gotta do is just move these keyframes. Closer together will make this go faster, farther apart will make it go slower. So now from here, we can just start adding other 
animation properties to this looping tunnel. So really whatever you want to do now to make this tunnel more unique. You know, you can change the amount of points that this has. If you want to make this into a circle, just crank the points up a lot, or you can make them less points, make it like a cool triangle. I think I want to have, that's kind of cool. I like that amount of points. You can do things like you can animate this roundness and you can animate this roundness over time. You know, something like this is kind of cool. And you can go in and start to play with things like the repeater. So if you want to animate this repeater over time, maybe you want this to animate in an interval of one. So if you want this to stick with your loop, you can just do things with basic math. So if this is gonna loop at every five seconds, then to make this stay at a perfect loop at 10 seconds, well, then make this repeater rotate at one whole uh, degrees or 360 degrees at 10 seconds like this. And then now you'll have this kind of repeating um, weird tunnel thing that's going to do a perfect loop here at 10 seconds when it comes back. You know, you'll want to play with the timing and maybe you don't care about a whole perfect loop so you don't have to do this kind of math. But here's where you just go in and start doing um, these mess with these properties and I'll continue to show you more cool things. So I'm gonna delete this rotation. Don't love it a lot. Maybe I'll just add in a non keyframe version. Maybe something like this. Maybe I want to mess with the scale a little bit. Something like that. It's kind of cool. Pretty cool. Maybe I just wanna add a little bit of rotation like this. Maybe like that, that much. Could be cool over time. So you have different properties that are mirrored on both the polystar that we set up and the repeater. And you'll notice that they affect things differently. So if you were to animate just the rotation on the polystar, this is going to kind of do a global rotation here. Whereas if you animate the rotation of the repeater, it's going to ro rotate all of the shapes differently at a, re at a repeated level, you can see here. And you can notice this too differently with kind of the anchor points and position. So if I move the position here, we're gonna get this kind of nice bend that's happening in the tunnel. So maybe I wanna move the position of the, of the repeated objects. So it's kind of like bending down like that. Feels like it's kind of coming out of the ground or something. That's pretty cool. And now don't forget, there's also all of these other things we could add to this as well. So maybe I wanna add on a zigzag here and start to zigzag it up. I could add crazy zigzag onto here and maybe turn down my uh, roundness a lot. Turn down my roundness. Whoa, this is crazy. Turn down my roundness, and now get this crazy zigzag pattern that's happening. But you can see I'm starting to get this bug here where the shape kind of snaps back. And so you can remember that on my offset, what's happening really is it's just kind of um, pushing the shape forward and then snapping back when the loop starts. So if this is happening to you or you're getting anything weird where the shapes are disappearing, you know, all you got to do is just um, mess with this offset and repeated copies amount. So either maybe we need more um, repeated copies, which are going to be push more copies um, farther away from you, or we need to fix the amount of, fix the offset amount. So I'm just going to grab both of these keyframes holding control and just kind of uh, either push them towards me or farther away and make sure you have both keyframes selected to control both of them and that should then just fix my loop hopefully and it might jump a little bit so if it does you know just go in and do the snapshot fix but that looks good and so now just um, you know one more thing t that we can do to really make this even crazier because this isn't uh, nightmare fuel enough right now is we have this polystar zigzag and repeater all under the contents here and this stacking order here matters so the polystar is getting affected by the zigzag and then getting affected by the repeater but we could if we want to add another polystar so if I control D to duplicate this polystar now we have two and I can make this clearer by um, changing the color here. So maybe if I make this like a blue here, 
we have a second polystar now. If I change the amount of points or something here. So this polystar is now separate than this one. And maybe I want to just apply the zigzag only to the one polystar by dragging it onto that one. So now this blue polystar, I'll call this blue polystar, is now different than the other one. Now both of them are getting affected by the repeater because the repeater is below, but only this one is getting the zigzag. So I can make this one, you know, maybe it's really round. Maybe it's this cool circle and it's still getting pushed downwards into the tunnel, but it has some different properties. So, you know, it could make this do other kind of crazy stuff. Maybe it wants to get a different scale and maybe it wants to be pushed in a weird way like this, pushed to the side. Or maybe this one wants its own repeater. Can we do that? Sure, it's not illegal, we could do this. And maybe it wants to be like that or something. I don't know. So now we can really start layering these things in kind of a crazy and crazier ways by just um, paying attention to the this layer order and adding new shapes in. And we can do this all on one freaking layer. How about that? All right, well, I hope you liked this tutorial. Uh, make some crazy, freaky spirals. Tag me on Instagram. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.